story goes, that if you were to take all the nails out of the house of Denora, and the houses of Denora were smuggled out of that mill, the whole town would collapse. The guys used to take their lunch buckets in with their lunch and fill it up with nails and carry them home and build their homes in addition to them and so forth. But the mill overlooked that because they were getting away with very low wages and so forth at the time. But now, let's go over here. This, this has to do my favorite picture of the North, right here. This is a picture taken by the Air Force or somebody, the Army the Air Force probably, in 1940, getting ready for the war. This is the community of the North built on the hot horseshoe bend. The mill started on that end, which is up here, South Denora, where we had the blast furnace. This is where you had the iron ore and the coke and the limestone and so forth, and you converted those raw materials into steel. Then it was processed along the river, and it became, eventually became rods and wires and nails and so forth. If you ever go to the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, take a look. There's some place on it, a little plaque that says, the wire that holds up the Golden Gate Bridge was built or made where? Right down here, a block or so away, here in Denora. The, uh, the Mackinac Bridge in Michigan, the wire was made there. So if you ever travel there and it collapses, I told you so. <laughs> <laughs> but here's the bridge that you couldn't come across now because you can't get in Denora anymore. You can't get out of it anymore either. And from this point on down, we have the zinc works. The the Nora Steel Works was built beginning in 1900. The zinc works didn't come until 1915. The purpose of the zinc was to produce something that would coat the steel so it wouldn't rust. So that was the purpose of the zinc works. Now, why would they build that in Denora? Now, believe it or not, supposedly the story is Denora was a strong anti-union town at that time. And so, therefore, they didn't want troubles with unions, and they built the zinc works right along here, from the bridge down to the northern end of the community. Believe it or not, Denora eventually became an extremely strong union town. And, of course, if you're Republican, you don't want to hear this, but that was one of the blessings in this world when, in 1935, we got the National Labor Relations Act so we could negotiate contracts so people could get decent wages and safe working conditions and things like that. But that's a little aside. But anyway, this light smoke that came out of the zinc works was really the culprit in all of this. Now look at this aerial photograph. See all of these white areas in the north? And it's even worse across the river in Webster because the winds most of the time came from the west, blew the smoke across the east. These white areas were areas in which nothing grew. No trees, no grass, nothing grew because it was killed by this smoke. And, of course, we in Denora and people in Webster are breathing it all the time. And we didn't think anything about it. We didn't want it to go away because that meant jobs. Most of the people who worked in the zinc works were Spanish or of Spanish descent. The reason was that there were zinc mills in Spain. Then when they started to build zinc works mills in this country, they were recruited and they emigrated to the United States. So most of the people of Spanish origin who came to Denora and started out in Spain, went to Cherryville, Kansas, and then back to Denora. So we have always had a large Spanish population in Denora, well integrated into the uh, community. In fact, our council president is Spanish, his father is council president before him is of Spanish descent and uh, very, very good people. But conditions in that mill were so bad that most of the workers, most of them, worked either three or four hour shifts. That's all they could take because of the heat and the bad air in that mill. They got paid for eight, worked only at most half that time. Then, of course, a lot of them took advantage of the situation and got other jobs, so they really lived it up. Later, the mill was very nice. They had built a number of homes on what is called Overlook Terrace. So it's pretty hard to see, but it's right above Meldon Avenue. Uh, we, we didn't get the Nora name Meldon, but we named an avenue Meldon. That's the one down below. And so they built nice homes for the bosses. The biggest home was the first one on the corner. 
It was designed for the superintendent of the zinc works. Well, he moved in there, and he moved out in a great big hurry because these fumes from his works blew over into his house. And he said, I'm not going to breathe that. So Mr. Neal moved up to Thompson Avenue, which is the next avenue up here. And, of course, then the mill donated that to the Spanish people, and it became the Spanish Club. And it still is the Spanish Club today. It's not nearly as active as it was before. But this is the killer right here. It is white smoke. Now, according to the earliest reports, that, that smoke contained sulfur dioxide and sulfur trioxide, and those were the killers. But in more recent times, many scientists tend to believe it was fluorides, which, is, which were part of the zinc-making process that was really the culprit in all of this. So we don't know exactly, but you can bet it was this white smoke that was killing people, killing vegetation. If you were to look, if you could see it across the hills of Webster now, covered with trees and vegetation, but it wasn't that way. When I was growing up, there was nothing growing on those hillsides, nothing on this side of the river. And because of that fact, there was a great deal of erosion. There were great gullies and ruts on both sides of that. So when we used to go out to Palmer Park, which is up here, to play ball and carry on and so forth, we had to go up and down over these eroded hills and so forth to get there. One of our favorite tricks was to sneak up with somebody and push him into one of those, you know, but we weren't too civilized. But this was a joke. Down along Melbourne Avenue, uh, and if you had come along that uh, way, you would have seen it. It's been recently redone. You would find out that uh, there was a cemetery called Gilmore Cemetery. The Gilmores were among the earliest settlers of this region. Captain Gilmore served in the well, one of the Gilmores served in the Mexican War and one served in the Civil War, and they're both buried out there. But they operated a ferry boat across the river. Now, the Gilmore Cemetery was very close to these poisonous fumes, and all of the vegetation died. Then over the years, the water came down the hill and eroded the soil. And many people said you could go in there and you could see the tops of the coffins. One of the myths or legends that nobody seems to know about what we're trying to prove is supposedly after one of the heavy rainfalls, one of the coffins washed out of the ground and ended up down on Melvin Avenue. So that's the kind of community, see, we lived in, you know. No, no vegetation, no growth. People couldn't raise chickens or anything around here because they would be poisoned, they would be dying, they didn't have anything to eat from the ground. It was, things were just terrible. But... It was a tremendously po uh, prosperous community. The, when the smog struck in 1948, the population was about, well, somewhere between 13 and 14,000. The mills along the river employed 5,000 people. Now, I'm sure when they take the census next year, there'll probably be fewer than 5,000 people living here in the borough of the north. Now, they have a few little plants and so forth uh, because of the modern Middle Mon Valley Industrial Development Corporation, but very, very few people are employed down there now, and of course very few people in Denora have jobs, and even after the great smog occurred, the people didn't want to blame the mills for it because they said, if we blame them, they'll pull out and leave and we won't have jobs, and eventually that's what happened. So this, this was a terrible, terrible situation. As I say, Thursday night, Friday night, into Saturday were the worst conditions at all. It got to be so bad, in fact, that the hospitals, there was one in Monongahela and one in Shawler, were just filled. They couldn't take any more people. The doctors couldn't get around to everybody's home to uh, take care of the people. So they set up a temporary hospital in the Denora Hotel, which is down on the next block. It's still there. It's like most of the things in Denora collapsing now. But on the first floor, which is a few steps above street level, they set a clinic up there so they could take care of the people who were sick and ill and couldn't breathe and so forth. Later, they had to set something up in the basement down there, and that was a temporary morgue because the funeral directors couldn't handle all of the bodies and the people were dying over that particular weekend. So it was a bad, bad situation. No question about that at all. But let me show you a few other things about this 